guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Charles from Channel Books on Stereo, and I hear you one of my favorite authors. We have Nikki Asher today on my channel. But how are you doing today, Nikki? I'm good. I'm good. It, I'm uh, off for the summer, so I'm very good. Nice, nice. Hopefully, you're getting good summer weather and getting some relaxation times, and hopefully, you're writing more books. Definitely. That we can see in the future. Okay. <laughs> I was like, if, you, if you said like, oh, I'm never writing a book ever again, I'm like, oh, Nikki. <laughs> I, I don't think so. It's an addiction. I can't stop. <laughs> and so my first question I want to ask is, how did you get started writing romance? Were you always a romance reader? And then you're just like, I, I, can, I can take a stab at this and write my own. Or were you always a writer? <laughs> kind of. Um, so I've always been a reader, um, a huge, huge reader. When I was little, my mom and I... Um, years ago, I'm, I'm about to show my age here. Years okay. ago, <laughs> we used to go to used bookstores and I would get to exchange the books to get new books. And you get like 10 cents for every book that you returned. What? Um, <laughs> and so for you, know, I just, yeah, I would just, just devoured books for years. And then when I had my kids, um, I said, stopped reading and then I went to college and started reading again um, because I was a lit major. And um, once I started reading again, I just couldn't stop. And then I found Twilight and then the adult Twilight, Fifty Shades, like everybody else, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, and then my boyfriend bought me an iPad <laughs> and um, Apple Books and... Um, so for years, I was just a reader, just devouring them. And I actually had a few people ask like, oh, because I teach writing, would you ever write a book? And I was like, no, no. <laughs> I'm going to leave that to like the writers. I'm a reader. I can never even imagine writing. And then um, I was obsessed with um, Secret Baby MMA books. And I felt like I had read all of them. Mm -hmm. And a friend of mine was like joking and she was like, just write your own and it was just kind of a joke and so then I was like okay I'll just mm -hmm. do that and um I did and I didn't really think I'd sell any books um <laughs> and then like it's I sold some <laughs> and so that was it and I just haven't stopped writing since oh I'm so glad you kind of converted from a reader to a writer because like <laughs> your romance are just like perfection and I have to start with like the Bound duet with, that you recorded with Kay Webster. That was, I didn't know where you guys were going with that duet. I was like, okay, so it's going to be MM and then like you're going to have MF. I was like, oh no, wait, hold up, wait. I was like, hold up, what, 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 what is happening? I'm like, is this a foursome? I just <laughs> loved how you built the characters, like each one of the four. And I was like, Oh, I feel for all of them. Like poor Mia, and poor. I was like, <laughs> Mia's just like in love with her best friend. Her best friend is like, I love you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> so, I wasn't like, was it? Yeah. How was the process writing that, and where did that idea um, come from? Well, yeah. So, um, obviously, Kay Webster and I have written a few books together. Um, and so we were we're both huge readers, and I was like on a reverse harem kick. Um, but I had found that a lot of them had the same kind of trope, the enemies, the lovers, um, the high school academy, stuff like that. And there's nothing wrong with it. But as you get older, um, you know, your taste change. And I was like, I would just love to read a book um, where, it's, you know, a, they're a little older, not quite high school, you know, um, mm -hmm. maybe a little more mature, although Ashton, he has his moments. So <laughs> he does. <laughs> I was like, damn it, it Ashton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it just kind of started off with us talking about it. And then um, I'm a huge sports. She, Christy um, Kay Webster has, does not write a lot of sports romance, sports. Mm -hmm. but I do. I love football, <laughs> baseball, MMA. And so it um, that's where the hockey comes into play. Um, she's like, you know, you have to write every single hockey scene. I don't know anything about hockey. I don't want to touch you. <laughs> what do they do that puck? And, you know, no, I don't even know. Um, but, yeah, so we we took it and ran with it. And um, I it's one of my favorites. I loved it. Like, 
I just, I was like, I, when I first saw it come up on Kindle, I was like, is it going to be audio? Because I, I know if I ask Kay Webster, like, she's going to give me a very coy, she's not going to answer. And I was like, <laughs> one day I just like happened to look and I was like, you have audio. To I'm like, <laughs> I spill all the beans. I don't even know how to hold a secret, like, at all. Um, yeah, I, well, not only was it on audio, but um, the, the, narrators tim page is my favorite mm -hmm. um he's narrated all of my books he's so i love him um and kelsey navarro is just phenomenal mm -hmm. she's narrated a few of my books um and so when we were offered to do an audio and you know they gave us a list and i was like mm -hmm. you know how Here's about that idea. yeah and so and you know and i'm the kind of person where like we christy and i both wanted to make sure that you know they're gonna fit and when Tim did the different voices of the guys, like, I was just done like, deal. yeah, this is it. This is it. This is we, wanted, we wanted a different guy for, you know, a different voice for mm -hmm. each guy. And um, the, the audio company was like, no, we you know we really just want to do two. We think that that will be better. The readers will prefer that. So we were kind of stuck. And I think he did a really good job of he doing did. three different male voices. And like the steamy scenes when he narrates them, I was like, oh, I was like, oh. I don't even know how he does it. I, can I don't even know that. either. It's like he has like <laughs> chemistry with himself. <laughs> yeah, they they you put the two of us together and things are gonna get a little hot. <laughs> I, I I know because then I also read I only read the first book in your other duet. I think it I, stolen lies. I Hidden can't, Truth is the first book. Hidden yeah. Truth. I was like, you that's first book. the second book yet? I haven't read the second How book. How are you even, like living your life right now? I'm dying. Like, I see it on my Kindle. I'm like, <laughs> I, I need a break. The first book was like, I did not expect. I was like, this is like craziness that happens in that book. I was just like, <gasps> like the mother scene yeah. and like the whole reason why the father and then like <gasps> and the brother. I was like, okay. <laughs> I was like, how long was this book? I was like, I felt like I just like read like a five book series in like one it book. It isn't. It's not even that long. They're like, they're not a, yeah. You know what it is? Um, Kay Webster and I are both really big on no fluff. Um, like if it doesn't affect the book, it doesn't belong in the book. Like it needs to affect the plot in some way. It's got to advance the plot. Otherwise, it's not coming into our book. Um. Mm -hmm. So I think that when you do that in a book, it feels like they're longer because there's so much action mm -hmm. constantly. Whereas if you have a book where there's fluff, you're kind of like chilling for a little while. Yeah, I'm like, oh, I, I, can, I can pay attention every five minutes and still get the story. I'm like, okay, we're still in the cave. Okay. Okay. Let me check back yeah, in the chapter I'm, two. I'm not good with cliffhangers. So when we wrote those two duets, um, I was like, we have to release them like, kind of close together because people are going to kill us. <laughs> I want to die. I was like, it was like very comforting that I had the second book already available. So I was like, okay, <laughs> I, I, I don't have to wait. I don't have to be in agony. So I'm like, okay, we can take it. We can take a chill pill because <laughs> that book was crazy. I was like, you guys like just, I'm like shocked at like the whole plot, the plot twist. The amount of death that's involved in the book too. I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, she's definitely okay with killing people. <laughs> <laughs> so how was that like different than the Bound duet? Was this like well, a little bit different process? Um, well, book? I don't want to say anything because you haven't read the second book yet. But <laughs> the second book is one of my favorite tropes. So um, that's how it came up about. Oh. Um, so I don't want to give anything away. Um, but yeah, it's one of my favorite trips. So that okay. duet came about because I um, have like a few tropes that I absolutely love. Um, I love arranged marriage. I love single parent. I love secret baby. I love sports. Um, I love um, just, you know, certain things. Like that. So mm -hmm. we, you know, so it's, it's a trope that I love. Um, so that's that's how it came into play. I was like, I want to write something dark in this trope, but I I'm not as good with making guys super mean. Mm -hmm. um, and so I always joke and say that she's like the dark to my light. 
<laughs> because she can write dark like it's nobody's business. So, and I reread some of your other books. Oh, no. um, first one that I loved was Clutch Player. It's the one done through the Heroes Club. And I was really surprised with like all the, I thought that the hero was going to be a jerk. Because like he's like the jock character, and it's actually her well, best, I'm not good best friend. friend. <laughs> I'm not it good with heroine's like best friend, and like the whole thing, what what she was doing, I was like, oh man, yeah. Like, how did that story come about? Because like I love how you built. Like I think like probably the first half was like when they're in high school. I was like, is this gonna be high school romance? Because like that cover clearly looks like an adult. And then when you and I was like, oh, I love this. I love this. I love yeah. this. I love this. <laughs> Um, so the funny thing about that book actually is the entire beginning of the book is actually based on a true story, um, on my boyfriend and me. Um, so we met, um, in, I was dating his best friend and we started hanging out. Um, and like, we actually like the whole McDonald's McFlurry scene, mm -hmm. um, at the park, everything, um, actually all took place. Um, when he walked me, he actually had like walked me home. Um, and I was late and my mom grounded me and I snuck out of the house. Um, so like the entire beginning of it. And what? then, <laughs> uh, and then, um, he had left, um, for college and we broke up and I ended up getting pregnant. So wait, yeah. what? That oh, and then years so later cool. we ended up getting back together. Okay, you didn't like marry like another person and like <laughs> so, no, okay, so, no. so the second half is like but I, <laughs> but I do have to say that the guy, the ex-husband in the book is not like my ex-husband. <laughs> <laughs> my ex-husband is actually a really good guy <laughs> so that's where it, it becomes fake <laughs> but yeah um i based it yeah actually a lot of my books get based off of different things that happen mm -hmm. um a, a little piece of me or my kids or my life somehow gets woven into my books in some way oh that's so cool because I, mm -hmm. I absolutely love I, I, I really enjoyed the first half, but then when the second half hit and like seeing like what happened and what her best friend did, I was like, what? Because then I no, had a thought, like, as I was reading, no spoilers to anyone who hasn't read it, but I was like, wondering, I was like wait, this is the heroine's best friend. Why isn't she like not mentioned? <laughs> like, it just like crossed my mind. I was like, plot twist. I was like, I was like, no one has mentioned, like, that's weird for, like, her best friend, even though she was kind of evil. Yeah. And her yeah. ex-husband, the way you handle, like, the whole kind of abusive ex-husband and the single mother dealing with, like, two kids and, like, trying to protect the relationship with their father, I really enjoyed that aspect to the book, too. It was like, because you have, like, a really great romance, but you also have, like, this really great heroine just trying to provide the best for her kids. And, like, I love that seeing that so much like in the romance that. as a single mom um that's probably why that's one of my favorite tropes um mm -hmm. because being a single mom um i see it every day and um you're constantly you know judging yourself and mm -hmm. um wondering if you're doing a good job and are you making the right decisions and so i really love writing it um because I, I feel like, you know, a lot of the women, even if they're not single moms, they're moms, a lot of them are, mm -hmm. you know, and I feel like they really can relate to it. So I try to write books that people can relate to. I mean, not all of them, like Hidden Truths. Hopefully nobody can yeah, relate. Hopefully no one. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, for the most part, um, one of my favorite books to write is Through His Eyes. And she's a single mom mm. and not following herself. And so I just, I, I want the romance, but I also want like women to read something and for them to be able to feel like they can relate to that and they understand what she's going through. Um, I feel like women in general are very hard on each other, mm -hmm. very judgmental. I don't get it. Um, but when I read it, I just feel like when somebody may go, oh, that's such a weak heroine. I'm going, no, 
she's strong in her own way. Mm -hmm. And um, so I want to write them so that, you know, maybe that will become more of the norm. Yeah, and I hope so too, because I can see with that particular heroine, I can see a lot of readers going like, why didn't she like put her ex-husband in his place like a long time ago? But I was like, she's trying to do best by her kids and like trying to, like, especially for her Hunter, the older son, like saying like, like, like she wants him to have a relationship with her fa- with yeah. her father. She wants him to have. I was like, I appreciate that so much. It's that a she hard took the high character. road. Like, oh, I loved her character so much. I actually, um, one of my books, um, Takedown. I think it's Takedown. I actually dedicated it to my ex husband, <laughs> um, because it was like one of the few books where like the single mom and the dad they get along and they actually all become really good friends. Um, they even like guys play like on the same baseball team together. And I dedicated to him. Um, and it said something like, divorce is hard, but if I have to be divorced from anyone, I'm glad it's you. <laughs> or something like that. Uh, yeah. I'm just awkward all the time. That's a, that's a really great dedication. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I love that though. And I, I Absolutely, like the way you roll the kids too. Like I love kids and romances. Like anytime with, you have a single father, single kid, and the kids actually sound like how they sound at that age. Yeah, a, it's just like catnip to me. Like the little the daughter and like her like so like I love you, daddy, and like how she grows up. Readers. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of my beta readers, Lori, like she has a. Um, a four-year-old and a seven-year-old, you know, and and so then I have a 15 and 18-year-old. And when I started writing, my daughter was like, you know, 11, you know, so I've seen all the ages. Um, and then I have my best friend has four kids, all between the age of like one and 10. So I'm constantly like sending them pieces like, would your kid say this? <laughs> How would your kid say this? <laughs> Um, I love that so much because like they read so realistic. So I was like, okay, that makes me like, happy. I was like, I like this. Like Nikki's like, she's like, she's like, uh, like a prime, like a really great author. Like she nailed the kids. I was like, because like I was like, I was like, I like you, hero. You're good. Your romance is good. But I'm like, I'm here for these kids. Like I love these kids. And <laughs> well, then I was like, I... sometimes I'll read a book and um, and it's something against the author. But sometimes the kids sound so smart. I'm like. Damn, are my kids that dumb? <laughs> like, what? That's how he's talking? What the hell is wrong with my kids? They sure as hell didn't talk like that. Oh, God, I need to get somebody on this stat. My kids are not going to go anywhere in life. <laughs> like, I'm just kidding. <laughs> like a six year old talking like a 35 year old. You're like, yes. how does she know those words? <laughs> I know. I'm like, hey, why are you guys so stupid? <laughs> <laughs> like my kid is not talking like that. What is going on here? Is this my parenting? Am I not parent? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Oh <laughs> my goodness, I love that so much. And I have to ask you too: Are you going to plan to write um any of the kids' books? I was I was wondering if you know like. Mm-hmm. Um. So because that's a cocky book. Um, the cocky club book with Vikeland. The only way I can do it is if it stays in their world. So at this time, no, I know. Um, I, I would have liked to, but it all would have to go through them, and um, it's kind of like a whole process. And I have um so many other books, right? I mean, I never say never. You know, maybe it will happen. Um, but as of right now, no, just because they're releasing so many books with so many mm-hmm. authors. And, um, I was, I was actually the first in the first batch of people to release mm-hmm. a book. And, um, now I'm just kind of on my own timeline and. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's fair. <laughs> yeah. That's fair. I, that's fair. I get it. I was, <laughs> I I was reading the book. I was like, I need these kids romances. Book. <laughs> and, uh, I, like, I need all these kids romances. I'm like stat. I think there's I like, what, four the kids? fighting series. I know I can. Yeah. When I did that with the fighting series and then it went to the kids in the fighting love series and then to their kids in the finding love series, I was like, I'm never doing this again. <laughs> this is, this is so much work and I have a really bad memory. So I had to like, when I wrote the finding love series, I had to go back 
to the beginning and like read through all of those books and take notes. And I was like, this is a lot of freaking work. <laughs> But I loved them. I loved how they turned out. I love that the series is them. And I knew as soon as My Kind of Perfect came out, like literally the same day, I got messages. So this is definitely over? Like, is there like, any... Are you, are you, are you going <laughs> to consider? <laughs> it's over. Don't even ask. I like said that in my group. I was like, you guys, I love you. It's done. And they're like, well, but you said that. No, no. It's done. <laughs> <laughs> anytime i post anything on social media i'll just like include like a little subtext i'm like oh remember like how nikki promised us more books in that world <laughs> and just like tag you just like nikki i didn't mention them i didn't mention the book by name so you can't be mad at me it's not happening it's done i swear <laughs> <laughs> but two i want to talk about your imperfect love series like i love 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 all those books so much like, when I first read the first two books, I was like, Nick and Killian are asses. <laughs> but then, like, I was like, how did this author make me fall in love with these heroes? I was like, after Killian called Giselle a hoe, I was like, hold up, hold up, <laughs> hold up, hold up, hold up. I was like, I was like, he can't, yeah. he can't be like, I forgot about interest. that. He did, I did it. It. <laughs> And, like, Nick... And Celeste in the first book, and then him just going Celeste's like, "What do you favorite. want? Do you have want my read, money?" I was like, "Have you read um Celeste's book yet, or no?" I have. You have. It, you know, it's so funny. Is the pickup was supposed to be a complete standalone? There was not supposed oh. to be any other books. Um, and as I wrote the pickup, I fell in love with Celeste. <laughs> Which seems kind of seem kind of weird, you know, because everybody hated her. Um, it, but I just saw something in her. It's just the way I am. I don't know. I just see something in these underdogs, in these imperfect mm -hmm. women and men. And um, so I actually rewrote the entire the pickup, the entire book. Really? Because, I, because she was so bad in the pickup. Like people were net like. It was irredeemable. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, no, this isn't how I see her. Mm -hmm. And so I rewrote it, not Nick in Olivia's story, but I wrote it because of Celeste. So and then I rewrote it how I really saw her. Mm -hmm. And so then while I was rewriting it, all of a sudden, like Killian started jumping out at me. And the readers, when they read the pickup at first, they were thinking Killian and Celeste. Oh, hell. Oh, heck no. Like, I'm like, no, no. I was like, no. It was like Killian and Giselle. I was like, I was, I didn't know know who Celeste is because I was like, I don't think there's any other guys that we, we that we've been introduced so far yet in the book. Killian and Celeste. I'm like, no. Like, yeah, they, they would be like fire and fire. I had readers like that were like, I don't want to read Celeste's book. I don't like her. I, you know, she's a villain. And then they were like, a lot of them were on my arc team. So you know, I was like, look, why don't you just give it a chance? If you don't like it, then you give it a bad rating. I don't care. Like, I want your honest review. Just give it a chance. They were, like, messaging me, like, she is my favorite. I cannot, like, I had readers who hated her in the pickup and were actually getting, like, tattoos that, like, represented her. You know, uh -huh. the, the daffodil, you know, and uh, everything. Like, they, the, um through beauty comes chaos and i mean mm -hmm. literally tattoos to represent her and these were the same readers that were like i hate her i hate never her. Her. <laughs> yeah and then um and then they were like is quinn gonna get a book and i was like no and i wasn't gonna write i was done and then you had to oh my the fact well, that quinn's book may have not existed hurts hurts my soul <laughs> well you know it was so crazy i was going through my news feed on facebook and a photographer had posted that image and I was like scrolling through and I stopped and it like clicked and I was like and I sent it to my friend Stacy and I was like this is this is Quinn and and um and uh my mind just went blank on <laughs> this is this is Quinn and what is the hero's name and Lachlan okay oh my god <laughs> I'm like, not Chase, not Jax, freaking Lachlan. <laughs> I was going to go through, I went through all the characters and names in my head, but I was like, okay, I think it starts with an L. Oh my that's, God. A, that's the best I got. 
but when I saw it, I was like, this is them. And um, the story just like, it came to me. I wrote that book so fast. Oh, um, okay. it just, it just came to me and that was it. And I, there in the couple on that cover is a real couple. Oh. I loved it. Yep. They're married and everything. Oh, that's I so love- cool. Yeah. So, okay. um, yeah. <laughs> that Actually, is crazy. I, to I hear have a about couple of real couples on, um, fool me once. If you ever look at that cover, um, they're a real couple as well. Um, uh, I know. I'm such a romantic. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I was so shocked with, with the turn that you took with Celeste in first book because I was like, she could easily be like a hateable villain. But then Olivia's like, damn it, I was going to hate you, but like now we're going to be best friends. And now we're <laughs> going to like braid each other's hair. And then all the <gasps> kids are going to be friends. I was like, I. And like her friendship with Nick, I was like, that is so rare. A yeah. male female friendship that never crosses any like sexual, like even though they pretend to be engaged. Yeah, yeah. even when they were together, nothing. I mean, they tr- they tried, but it was it like, just it's didn't. like doing my brother. I was like, okay, yeah. I was like, it's like th- there's nothing here. <laughs> yeah, no, I really, yeah, Olivia is she's she's so sweet, and I felt like you know Olivia really kind of counters balances Celeste, like they all kind of you know I don't know. It, I think I that. That tends to happen in all of my books where there's always like the opposites attract friendships and mm-hmm. um, you don't see it coming and you're like, how the hell are they even friends? Um, in my Finding Love series, um, I have um, Lexi and Georgia and their sisters and they're polar opposites, but they work, you know, like yeah. it's just it's just that yin and yang, you know, vibe that I love. Yeah, and I love how, like, once they all got together and started having their babies, and, like, once they had all girls at one point, then it was like, okay, all of our girls are going to be friends. It's like, <laughs> I was like, it's like, clearly, I was like, there's clear setup for, like, more books. Because, <laughs> like, now I yeah, need all these kids. It's not happening. It's not happening. I know. They, well, I knew that the readers were going to want um, Chase's daughter um, to have a book and Skylar and I was like it's not happening so I made sure in the epilogue to give her like a husband and kids I was like this is not happening like I need to make sure <laughs> we didn't care they were still like well you can still write her story I was like you can still do it <laughs> no I know I could they want me to write series all day I love it I love that somebody loves my book enough to want more you know mm-hmm. Kind of how it started when I wrote Fighting for a Second Chance, which is my very first book. Her best friend was Kayla. And I like wrote it as a standalone. And then like the bloggers were like messaging me, like, oh, is Kayla gonna get a book? And I was like, You want Kayla to have a book? You know? <laughs> and I was in shock and I was like, okay, I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like wrote it and people read it. So I love it. You know, the worst thing I think that can happen to an author is you like write a book and people are like, okay, I don't want any more of that crap. <laughs> <laughs> then you're screwed. So that is true. But like, it's because your characters are so good. I was like, I was expecting to hate Nick and Killian. I love the other two heroes. Like, they were, they were like, they were like, the last two books in the series are like my favorite. I was like, ooh. Is Jace and then oh, I can't remember. I already forgot his name. Like I'm so bad. Uh, Lachlan. <laughs> Let, and Lachlan. I don't know if you read Jax's story, Jackson Willow. It's actually not out. It was in my newsletter. Jackson no, I Willow. Haven't. I wasn't going to ask you about that. I was like, I was like yeah, yes. later, later this year, I'm going to be putting out a box set, and their story will be in the box set on Amazon. But yeah, Jackson will have an entire story. Um, if you subscribe to my newsletter, they have their own story. Okay, now I need to because uh, now I need. To know. I was like, I was wondering. I was, I was wondering, like, where is his romance? I was like, he's who? Yeah, I'm like, was this hinted to somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they have one. I had to give them their happily ever after. <laughs> But you put your couples through it, especially for Celeste and Quinn. <laughs> My heart went out, like, especially with her mother. Like, even Giselle, too, like, going through her mother and, like, having bipolar disorder and trying to help and save her. And, like, she being, I was like, 
<laughs> do so many amazingly yeah. like deep things and like still manage to have like the steam the good romance part and then <laughs> you have like a really good story i was like i, I'm I like, do i put them through a lot my beta readers say that all the time to me they're like what book i was um it's finding beauty in the darkness it used to be called bordello um but then amazon somebody somebody reported it um, because bordello means, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this on air, but it means whorehouse. And so, um, I had to change the title because Amazon mm. was like, they no. <laughs> put it in a category for like sex products. <laughs> so I had to change the title. So it's finding beauty in the darkness. But when I was writing that book, um, my beta readers, and then even like the bloggers and the readers, when they read it, they're going, again? You're doing this or again? And then like they'd read the next part. Are, are you serious right now? Do you hate this girl? Why? <laughs> Why are you doing this to her? And I'm like, she's gonna have a happily ever after. Calm down. But really, <laughs> you have to put her through all of this. You, you made Quinn really work for it. I was like, even the commentary uh, about like domestic abuse that um Quinn makes. I was like, you don't understand until you're actually in that in that situation. And I love that so much because I can see a lot of haters to that character going like, okay, why didn't she leave him like so long ago? Why didn't she it tell was, her brothers? It was one of the books where it was, I had readers, like I had readers that messaged me and literally in tears saying like, thank you for this book. I needed this. You know, she is strong and she is beautiful and I am her. And then I had the readers that were going, ugh, She's so weak. And I'm like, you know what? The fact that you think that makes me happy because that means that you've never been there, mm -hmm. you know? And so I, I, I don't care. I know that every book that I write is not going to be for everybody. Um, everybody won't be able to connect to it. That's why you, there's so many authors and so many types of books. And I write, you know, I feel like I try to write, you know, different types of books where it's not all the same thing. Um, and sometimes a reader will love it and sometimes a reader will hate it. But she was definitely one of those where she was most women. And I think that even the women who say that she's weak, I think that if those women look deep down, they would be able to relate to her. And I think that scares them. Mm -hmm. So like, I didn't expect what you did with the husband character. I was like, okay. She's going to end up leaving him and then there's going to be drama because then he's going to like go through court and like want the baby. And then like the, the twist that you took it in and like how her little like the assistant, I was like, I'm going to slap this girl. Like she's like, <laughs> she's like, oh my God, like well, you're fat, but I was like, does she? I was like, I was like, Quinn, you better like WWE Jerry Spring her right there in the hospital. But like how she just like, was like, here's the pictures of all the people that he's been sleeping with. You're not the only one. <laughs> Well, because you know, at the end of um, at the end of on the surface, when she was married and everything, everybody was just like, "Okay, she's not going to get a story because that's she's the end." Married. And when I saw that image, it just—I don't know. It's just—it's really weird. Um, one of my good friends, she does my graphics, Stacy. She makes fun of me all the time because I'll literally get into the shower. While I'm in the shower, I'll like mm -hmm. plot an entire series. Like while I'm in there for like really, it's so weird. It just randomly comes to me, or I'll be driving, and all of a sudden I'm like, I'll say to my daughter, "Grab my phone, start typing this," and I'm just like, <laughs> all of a sudden I'm just like plotting stuff. Like it just randomly. I I was on the phone with my friend Stacy the other day, and then like ten minutes later, I sent her an entire plot. For a four series like rock star romance series and she goes when when did this just did you just come up with this right now <laughs> in the 10 minutes we were off the phone like i barely even went pee like <laughs> i'm like yeah is, what do you think and she's like, like <laughs> i want i want that if that's actually coming i want that it like, is it it's is now recorded here, yeah. it's now is coming I'm gonna be waiting on Am if I don't see it on Amazon. I'm like, hey, Nikki, I'm it like, is. where's the series? No, it's not coming until next year. I mm. write ahead, like, um, I'm I write every single day. It's literally an addiction. Um, 
I've yet to experience like writer's block or anything like that. Knock on wood. Um, so I write every day. And because of that, I write like, I'm like a year in advance. Oh, I'm so excited. I, know. I don't I'm even so like excited. tell many people that. Um, so I like my book that's coming out in October is called No Strings. That book's done. Then in January, Only Ever Yours. Um, I told the readers in my group which ones. Mm -hmm. And so that's coming out. And then in April, I haven't discussed it, but it's a, um, he's a musician. Um, it's not a rock star book. He's a okay. musician. Think, think like Justin Timberlake meets Justin Bieber pre-church. Oh, <laughs> that is pre-God. I'm oddly vibing with that. <laughs> um, but so that book, um, I shouldn't even tell you. I'm going to tell you. You should. You, anyway. you should. You should. You should. You should. <laughs> So the rock star series is a spinoff of that book. So that book's like a standalone. And okay. then there's going to be a four book rock star series. And this series is so freaking angsty. Um, it has so much going on. I just, yeah, I can't okay. even deal. With it. Now I'm super excited. <laughs> I am all super your upcoming excited. releases. I already I'm bought so all the images. I have all the titles. I'm almost done writing the first book. Um, I have my editor scheduled for March for all of them. I'm so excited. Um, and they're all so different. Ooh. I feel like like another fighting series or another imperfect love series, you know, where they're so different. Um, it's four guys in a band. Um, and they each have their own book. Yeah, I'm loving it so oh, you're, is you're there speaking my language you're speaking <laughs> my language like rock star, now all you have to do is just like say like paranormal add like a hint of paranormal then <laughs> like i'm like I was like you will be like like even if you did i like i still i still really love your books but like if you did paranormal like you would just be like i'm only gonna read nikki books for the rest of my, well, the rest of my you life write, you read Kay webster she has tons of paranormal she writes paranormal she writes aliens i was telling my she daughter the other day I was like, I was like, yeah, she writes like a book about aliens, and my daughter's like, like actual aliens, aliens? and I'm like, like yeah, she's like, people read that, yeah, people freaking read that. I have to be careful with Kay Webster's books because then I usually find like a kink or something that I didn't know that I, when I read the Cinderella trilogy oh, by no. her, I was like, why do I like this? People <laughs> like bro. When we wrote Hidden Truths, and you know the book's old enough that I'm I'm okay with saying the spoiler. But when he sawed off the guy's foot and then like beat the crap out of him with his foot, I was like, kind of turned on. And I'm like, I really, yeah, I'm like reading it after she wrote it, and I'm like, this really I shouldn't be okay with this, right? But you are. <laughs> but I totally was like for days we like message each other like feet I mean <laughs> images of feet we're like like just this is okay like this should not be okay <laughs> that is the danger of K Webster books and your books just like hit me in the emotions and I never know like I'm like okay Nikki's gonna take me for a ride but I know she's gonna get me there <laughs> like clutch player when I read I was like okay where's the scene Nikki I'm like I'm like, where's the steam? Where are we gonna get the steam? I was like, okay, they're in high school. I'm like, okay, I don't think we're gonna go super steamy no, when they're in high school. <laughs> no, I had a lot of readers when they first started reading it because it started off in high school. They were like, "Did you write a high school romance?" Because I feel like you know everybody has their audience, and mm -hmm. I don't write high school romance. Um, and so my readers were like, "What?" I was like, I probably messaged you. I'm like, "What is it? What is this? Wait, why are they in high school?" I'm like. And yeah. I was like, because it, it, it happens like for a decent chunk of the book. I was like, is this the high school romance? Well, you know, I just really felt like you needed to see that. Like in mm -hmm. order to appreciate where they go and how they get there, I just really felt like the reader needed to see that. Because it mm -hmm. wasn't just a, hey, he's a high school boyfriend. And, you know, when we break up. And, and broke up and it, everything. Yeah. I just felt like it needed to be there. Um, and I did that. Um, I did that in another book. I'm trying to think of which one it was. 
but I did that in another book. <laughs> I can't think of what it is. And it's weird. Oh, it's in the book I'm writing right now. <laughs> I, just, I suck at this. Is this interview over? <laughs> you're going to be spoiling stuff from books that are not even out. You're thinking it's like, oh, no. No, it doesn't matter. But yeah, um, <laughs> where like, but it makes me think like I don't think I could write like a full high school romance, and I think that's also because I teach high school that I still really goes. So while I enjoy reading some high school books, I find myself a lot of times going, oh, that wouldn't happen. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. They're not doing that in the bathroom. <laughs> Actually, they may be. But <laughs> we're going to get caught. <laughs> no. You know, so it's too difficult. I've been teaching high school for 10 years. So it's just, it's too, I could never write a full, like, in school book. Um, one of my favorites, um, if you've never read it, it's Reverse Harem, um, Surviving Amber Springs by Siobhan Davis. No, I haven't. It's my favorite. Like, I tell everybody I know about it. Um, I have it signed. My daughter read it. Um, it's, and it's okay. we lo I love it. It's so good. Um, and it takes place in high school and then kind of moves to college. Um, but I felt like it was just, I don't know. I just loved it. So I do like the high school books, but mm -hmm. I could never write it because I would be like, I'd be too realistic and it would probably suck. <laughs> I feel like now you need a heroine who's a teacher, like going over like romance books where I'm sitting in high school, I'm like, you see, like that would never happen. That would never happen. That would never happen. <laughs> I think I had like one teacher. I didn't even ever had her in the classroom because <laughs> I suck at it. I think Ashley, I feel like, oh yeah, and fighting for your love. She was a teacher, but then she got a job as a stripper and she got fired because that's what happens in real life teachers. See? <laughs> that's so what now what we need and to happen is you and Kay Webster come together, write a high school bully romance, and <laughs> Kay Webster will be like, no, stop making this so really realistic. <laughs> no. Well, that's the first book that we wrote together um, was because this is so, this is so nerdy. Um, <laughs> Keith the, is the first book that we wrote together. Mm -hmm. And he is a t modern telling of Wuthering Heights. Mm. And so how we started like really talking, Kay Webster and I, was me as a teacher. I was like, oh, I'm teaching Wuthering Heights to my students and you should read this. And she's such a book nerd like me. She was like, she was like, okay, you know, maybe I'll check it out. And then like, so I'm like, trust me, this guy is That's like good. your kryptonite. Like he is so messed up and there's a love triangle and it's cousins. It's a love triangle between cousins in the 18th century. She's like, really? Mm-hmm. I only need to check this out. And she did. And so we just nerded over it. And she was like, we need to write this story. <laughs> and so okay, now I'm mad that I haven't read Heath because Wuthering Heights is one of my it. favorite classics. Really? Of all it's, time. Well, it's so dark it, and messed up. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of people don't even know that. And there is obviously a twist to it. It doesn't end the exact way. We did our own little spin on it. But okay. I, I feel like because I've read it and taught it so many times and she's read it, we stayed really, we stayed true to the original story while adding our own spin to it. It's three love stories in one book. Oh, wow. That's ambitious. Wow, that's crazy. It's, honestly, I feel like it's probably nothing you've ever, like, like anything you've read in your life. I, I don't think I've read a, one book with like three romances. In you have book. to like really read it to get it, but um, a lot of readers were afraid to read it, but those that read it freaking loved it. They're like, this is like nothing I've ever read, but you have to be willing to take that risk. And mm -hmm. we will hear Wuthering Heights and they're like, oh, I know how that ends. I'm not reading that, you know, but um, those that read it, uh, I feel like they really loved it. I loved writing it. I... It was one of my favorite to write. It was like not, it was just, it was really cool. 
I'll put in my detective glasses whenever you're like, let's see how accurate we are to the well, story. I promise you <laughs> it is. I will gladly take that challenge. Believe me, I have read that book, the original book. I've taught it for 10 years. So um, my favorite, book. my favorite when I'm teaching it is when my students, you always know which students are actually reading because mm -hmm. when they get to the chapter, they'll come in and go, miss, she's, she's dating both of her cousins. And I'm going, ding, 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 you read. I, did. <laughs> or, I was okay. so, I didn't really expect that he really barely went to die in the, in the, like, halfway through the book. I'm like, oh. I was like, and then, like, how they end up together, I'm like, oh, this is dark. I'm like, and then what yeah. he does with the kids, I was like, oh, this is really messed up. <laughs> And ours is just as messed up. <laughs> I promise you. We stay so true to Heathcliff. Um, so Ooh. true. It's yeah. I if I feel like anyone who's read Wuthering Heights, like they they should. And there's not many books out there that have done have dared to do a modern mm -hmm. telling okay. of Wuthering Heights. Everyone's like, oh, Cinderella, and you know, which is fine. Yeah. But yeah. And so when we did it, I was like, we're doing this, and she's like, we're doing this. <laughs> I was like, okay, guide me into the dark. I'll follow. I am so happy. Like, I, I didn't, I seen the cover, but I was like, oh, I was like, what is he? That was like, it didn't click to me that it was a Wuthering Heights retelling. I was like, oh, <laughs> it seems like a dark taboo romance. I was like, okay, we'll put that, we'll, we'll get into that eventually, but it's, it's long, Wuthering it's Heights. The long, it's the longest book I've I'm ever written. I'm fine Because with it has three stories. It's, I don't even know, it's so thick. It's, yeah. Um, because we considered making it a duet because of the way that it happens. And we were like, no, screw it. One Put book. It all together. One book. I, like, I appreciate because that. <laughs> just one book, just keep going. You're in it for the long haul. Just keep going. Because, <laughs> like, my track record with series is I start a book, I start a book in the series, and they go, oh, what are these other, like, new releases that the what author has out? It? And then I go, like, oh, wait, there's, like, four books now. Okay. I'm the same I, way. Like <laughs> I was just talking to a reader tonight actually and I had said she had recommended a book and it was number like book number two in a series mm -hmm. and I was looking for a secret baby book and she goes well you should start from book number one and I said no I really want to start with book number two because I want to <laughs> read the secret baby book and she's like and she said well how, don't you want all your readers to like start from the beginning? And I said, no, I want my readers to read whatever the heck they want to read. <laughs> like, I mean, while my books are series, I try really, really hard to make them to where they could be read as a standalone mm -hmm. because I just feel like, you know, and yes, of course, if you start from the beginning, it's the best reading experience, performance, whatever experience you know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but I'm like, if I want a secret baby book, I want to read a secret baby book. And I want to be able to pick up book number nine and read the secret baby book. <laughs> like, I don't want to read book one through eight. I just want to read the freaking secret baby book. So I try really hard. <laughs> um, I try really hard. But, you know, of course, it it the, the longer it goes, the harder it is. And by the time I got to the finding love series with my kind of perfect, you know, I had a lot of readers that were like, well, I wish I would have started from the beginning. And it's like, well, go, go ahead. Start from the beginning. Have fun. But you totally read that book. If you were okay, calm down. Mm -hmm. It's just like anytime an author says inter like standalones, I'm like, how standalone is this novel truly? Cause then like, I will go into, I'm like, who like who are these characters that they're referencing, or like some like someone where it takes place in the same world and stories happen at the same time? I feel like your books. I'm like, okay, I can read Celeste's book and be interested in the other characters and like, oh, oh they have a book. Let me go check out those. So I don't feel like yeah. your books are missing not anything. To give anything away. Yeah, like you you know them and I, you know and but I try not to give their plot away too much. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like knowing who they're going to end up with isn't really a spoiler because you can look at the blurb and see the names on them. I like, it now, yeah, you know, so I'm just like, eh. but I do try to keep, you know, the, the plot, you know, and I try to kind of keep them separate. Um, some of my books, I mean, like tapping, like I have a fighting love and tapping out is with Marco and Bella. 
Well, Clinch is book number two. They're not, the people from book one aren't even in the second mm-hmm. book. Like, they live in a different state. Hey. You know, so it it doesn't even, you know, it doesn't make it to me. I'm like, hey, it's a standalone, mm-hmm. but you put them in a series, you know, so people can read Everyone them in order. Like, yeah. Like, how standalone? Like, of course. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm going to start with book one. I'm okay with that. I'm start that okay. one. <laughs> you read all of them. Go for it. Now but, I'm just like, whatever. I'm like, whatever. Okay, I'm going to buy that book. I'm like, if, if I get lost. <laughs> It's just gonna happen. We'll figure our we'll figure our way out through it. <laughs> I'm the same way. Sometimes I'll go back and like grab the book before it and like skim through it real quick. <laughs> like, let me just get caught up real quick. Okay, good. Now I'm good to read my secret baby book. We're good now. <laughs> People get so mad at me when I when I when I like do the, just jump into a random book in a series and then say like. I didn't feel like I got the world building. And they're like, no, st- <laughs> you're reading book 12. I, and my own world. I don't read your world. <laughs> I built my own. It's okay. <laughs> I, love it. like, I just get roasted for that critique. I'm like, oh, sorry, I would have read the other books, but I only wanted to read this one book. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not judging. It's it's just, sure. The romance is one of that few genres where you can do that with like a lot of series. Unlike like fantasy or like YA, where like if you read yeah. like book book three in the Twilight Saga, you'd be like, "What the hell is happening?" Yeah, no. If you have a book, if you have a series that's building up like that, you can't you can't do it. I wouldn't have the the memory or the brain capacity to like write, you know, like an entire series like that. It's hard enough to write these. I'm like, mm-hmm. no, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, no, not really. And this is probably going to be the hardest question I asked you. I, w- I will be asking you, what are some of your favorite romance books slash authors? Oh, that's not hard for me at all. Oh, that's I'm not hard at all? No, no. Because here's why. I, even though I write a lot of books, um, I'm a huge, huge reader. Honestly, every day, it's a struggle. Do I read or do I write? I write. Uh, I'm a huge reader. So some of my, I have so many favorites, to be honest. Um in so many different kinds so secret baby unexpected reality by kaylee ryan kaylee ryan is freaking amazing um southern pleasure by her is single dad freaking love her um recently bb reed lilac reverse harem i own both covers (laughs) um signed paperbacks um siobhan davis love her um i think i mentioned surviving amber springs um, I loved it. Um, taking it back a little old school to Natasha Madison's older books, Temp the Boss. I haven't read all of her newer books, but Temp the Box is um, single parent. Freaking hilarious. Ooh. Loved it. Um, trying to think of who else. Oh, Siobhan Davis recently um, Condemned by Love mm-hmm. is Secret Baby Mafia Romance loved that book um some of my um <clears throat> sweeter reads i don't read a whole lot of books that don't have like a lot of sex in them but some of my favorites um michaelia smeltzer she wrote the series called um it has last to know is the first book um it's the willow creek series they're musicians they're in a band love her books she writes amazing sweet sexy um books let me think i can go on forever um <laughs> i can just keep going i keep looking back at my sign paper books. i'm like what else what else um yeah i those are those are just some of them that i could think of right now the top of my head and then oh and then like Kay webster obviously um the whispers and the roars um um her original series um my uh what is it uh love uh shoot oh, um, um this is love baby this is war baby oh this is war oh, series is- yes um how i actually fell in love with Kay webster and started stalking her as a reader before i was even a writer was um dirty ugly toy i have that's the one i haven't read yet you have, oh my god i have, have the audiobook it's but so I haven't gotten good. into it. It has the best pl- 
plot twist ever. Ever. Okay. I own it signed. I loved it. And then, of course, the wild, you know, Hail. I love, I love Hail. I love, I love the wild. Um, I have all of those. I'm such like a fangirl. Like, well, she'll literally be coming out books, and I'm like, I need those. Can you send them to me, signed, please? <laughs> like, I would like literally like order them on the on the on her website. And she's like, Did you just order a book on my website? Yeah. <laughs> she's like, I'll just send it to you. I'm like, Thank you. <laughs> I am. I do with all the authors. I'm like, Oh, can I get this book? You know, signed. Oh, recently I read Start a Fire by Julia Wolf. So freaking good. It's high school what? romance, but it's so freaking hot. I had to recommend one of my books to the readers. It would be one that we actually never even talked about. Ooh. Unbroken Promises. Oh, okay. I would recommend that one. That was my favorite book to write. It means the most to me. It's the closest to my heart. Um, it will, I think, will always be my favorite book. Always. Uh, okay. So that's okay. That's mine. So if you okay. haven't read that book, I, I, that's, that's my recommendation. Um, <laughs> if you guys are wanting to purchase any of Nikki Ash's book, I will link all of that in down below in the description box. So definitely go click. She's on KU. Like go read, go enjoy. You will, you will be thanking me because you will love, you will love Nikki's books just as much as I love Nikki's books. But thank you again, Nikki, so much for coming on my channel and I'll catch you guys. I'll catch you guys all with a brand new video. Bye, everyone. Bye.